Hello and welcome to Getting Candid with me, your girl Helen. You're joining me from the Best Western Plus Hotel. And my guest today is a Zimbabwean multi award winning communications expert, tourism strategist. And we are just going to talk a lot about collaborations, how the media landscape is in, in uh, Zimbabwe, how the tourism industry is doing right there. Join me on the other side as I chat with Chief Koti. Welcome back. I mentioned to you that I'll be chatting with an award winning communications expert and tourism strategist from Zimbabwe. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm very good. I'm Welcome to Zambia. <laughs> Thanks, for Zambia. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. Munibonj. Yeah, you got that. I got that right? Yeah. <laughs> We're excited to have you in Zambia. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Your first time? Yeah, it's my first time to be in Lusaka. Okay. Um, yes, and uh, I've seen some very beautiful roads. Yeah, I thought you said beautiful women. No. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, I haven't seen anyone. <laughs> There's no woman Nobody. here. <laughs> so we're all men in his eyes. <laughs> the first time you came to Zambia, where, where, where did you go? Um, so I, the first time I think I was in Kitwe, must be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was here for a football match, Power Dynamos, playing yeah. against our Dynamos. Yeah, so yeah, I was a sports journalist then, and uh, yeah, it was a long trip. Yeah. Yeah, I could not afford to fly at the time. <laughs> so you had now, to, now to go we by road. We thank God for an aeroplane. Yeah. <laughs> it was quicker. Yeah. 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 Okay. I hope you enjoy your stay. How are you finding Lusaka so far? Lusaka is absolutely fantastic, and the hotel that I'm staying in is absolutely beautiful, and the guys are great in terms of their hospitality. Yeah. They're really good, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful to the team there at uh, the Kowal Best Western Yeah, 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 they do, really doing great stuff. I'm, I'm glad you like it. I'm glad you're enjoying those. Yeah. Zambians, uh, we're very welcoming people, so Absolutely. we hope you're enjoying the food. Uh, what's the Zambian food? I know you, you have Sima, so like... So, so, so yeah, but it's, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I was driving around the streets here, going to meetings, and I was seeing uh, the way you guys sell your tomatoes on yeah. the road. We <laughs> yeah. do that too. Yeah. yeah, and um, you know the what you call it, the the vegetables. Uh -huh. Yeah, we call it muriwo in Shona or umpita in Debele. So you bunch it together yes. into one bunch, and you you know so wrap. Yes. Yeah, kovo, chomolia, whatever you call it. Yeah, I was surprised that you also eat uh, vinkuala. Like uh, vinkuala is yeah. a mopane wen. Yes. 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 The, the region that I come from. Is the mother of Vinkuala. Yeah, Vinkuala. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's. Uh, let me start by finding out why you're called Chief. <laughs> chief Koti. Why are you called Chief? So, um, it's a very funny story. But um, where I come from, my dad was uh, one of the chiefs. You know, uh, my great grandfather was one of the chiefs. Yeah. So this guy, I really didn't know him that much because he was forever busy and never available, you understand? Mm -hmm. So this one time he decided to come and watch football at school. Yeah. So I was a goalkeeper for my school team. Oh, you used to busy. play? Yeah, yeah, I okay. play a lot of sports, yeah. Okay. So the guy decides to come with his entourage. Uh, and then suddenly there's commotion in the, you know, on the way. And then bang, <laughs> he gets there and people are like, oh, the chief's son, you're a chief. So from there, I was called Chief yeah. as a nickname. And then when I, when I got into broadcasting, yeah. and then I was looking for a name, you know, I wanted something cool, like, like Dreezy or Jeezy, you know, like something. Something that will stand out. But then I was, I was like, no, let me go with Chief. Ah, nice. And that's it. From that time, it's been Chief. It's been but chief. I am of royal blood anyway. Yeah. So, so you're kind chief. of a Chief. And I always carry my, my stuff with me. So you, you have it? Like I have it in the auto. Ah. Yeah. It's ruling the country as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the stuff like the It's just a stick, you know. Yeah. yeah. You, you know what, what chiefs do. Right? Yes, they, yes, they wear yes. all these yeah. things in. So all, yeah. like what you're wearing right now, yeah, yeah. Yeah. very very symbolic actually in the in the men's world. Uh, you know, the ones the ones the pearls and stuff. Mm -hmm. They are they that's a, a power symbol. Ah, okay. Yeah, very big power. Okay. In the vendor culture. I'm vendor. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, there's Venda in Zimbabwe. I thought we, we have 16 official languages, and in the Guinness Book of Records, I think we're one of the countries with the most official languages. 
Yeah, that, that's a lot. We, yeah. we have a lot. Yeah. Uh, 70. 70 what? 77? Yeah, but they're not yeah. official, really. Yeah, they'll you say... You just speak them? There's 14. But, but you don't teach should, them should at school. Like four, four, yeah, 14 are yeah. official languages. 14, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah, should be 14. That are taught in schools as well. Absolutely. So Nyanja, Bimba, Lozi, Tonga, Oz. Yeah, we have yeah. Tonga too. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, now, let's find out how your, your broadcasting journey started. Where did it start? Where did the passion stem from? The passion, I remember as early as five years old. Mm -hmm. You remember that we, we used to have, uh, you know, vinyls, mm -hmm. my record, yes. Yes. right? I don't know what you call them, my record, right? Yeah, my yeah. so we, we, we used to have that uh, at, at, at home. Yeah. And, you know, I used to love music. I was very influenced by music at a very tender age because I, I had sisters who were teenagers at the time. Yeah. And so they loved music a lot. And then we, I would, I would, I would sit with, we used to have these metal bins, you know, and they, they had these leads. Mm -hmm. So I would sit on the lead and start going around with the lead like this. <laughs> You know, yeah. so pretending to be a, mu a, mu a musician inside the record, yeah, and then also be the radio DJ inside there. So, <laughs> oh, from uh, that time, yeah, uh, that's the earliest you know interaction I had with radio. Um, and then we never had a TV set actually, mm -hmm. uh, we would go next door and watch uh, wrestling, it was the most popular then. And then from there, I think that's where I started really enjoying it and I forgot about it. I went into sports big time, played cricket a lot, football a lot. Uh, and then when I was uh, at Zimbabwe cricket, um, you know, I was trying out my hand also just helping in the media department and they made me a floor manager. Like I was shadowing the floor manager. Oh, okay. And then uh, the girl who was supposed to do the, the reporting was nowhere to be seen and this was live TV on Supersport. Yo. So they handed me the microphone, said, you're dressed well, just do it. You've been seeing what she's been doing, just do it, just Yo. speak. <laughs> and so they gave me this, uh, you know, this earpiece yeah. where you listen to the director from afar and all that. I'm setting the media secrets now there. There's always a piece that we listen yeah. to the director. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy was cool. shouting, he's like, what is that? TV, and right? that can be nerve wracking if you don't know what's yeah. so, but, what happens. But this was live, you know, they'd already yeah. gone, say, Camera 8, are you ready? I yeah. remember even the camera number. Say, camera 8, are you ready? The guy said yes. <laughs> Boom. I had a person I was supposed to interview, so, but I was supposed to say something first, like, Welcome to our that's house. What I want, that's what I wanted to know. Like, when they say Camera 8, did you know that you were supposed to maybe look yeah, into no, Camera 8? I, I, I had an idea because I had been you shadowing, working. you know, yeah. for, for a couple of days actually. It was just three days. So oh, the fourth day was. It's nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> so the funny part is they just said, camera eight, are you ready? And then the guy came to me, right? Yeah. I remember, because I had been emceeing a bit, you know, family functions, yeah. you're given the microphone, but I never really had a, a relationship with the microphone mm -hmm. until that day. And <clears throat> I started, camera eight is now live. I was shaking, I was sweating. And I said, good morning, <laughs> Sports club. <laughs> the, the guy, the, the director came and said, "Why is he shouting?" <laughs> that's what you say. He used swear words. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was even worse, actually. The boy spoke. The boy spoke because I could hear the noise of the people in the in the ground because it was a cricket match. And yeah, but from there, uh, he liked what I did in the end, and they started polishing me up for the entire series, which was about 21 days. Yeah. That girl actually turned out to be my wife later on. Oh, she, really? But she lost her job. Oh. She lost her job. That particular job. You, you, got your jo your job. <laughs> you got a job from your wife. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and then from there, um, yeah, I mean, I moved mountains and then I went to radio after that. Uh, we were, where I stayed for over 12 years, I think. Yeah, 12, yeah, no, six years actually, six years, yeah. But I've been doing this now for, for over 15. Yeah. How's been the experience? How's the broadcasting um, landscape in Zimbabwe? In Zimbabwe? Um, so yeah, you know, we, we, we had a, a single uh, broadcaster for a very long time. I think until 2012, uh, the radio station that I eventually worked for became one of the first uh, independent radio stations. When I say independent, I mean independent from the national broadcaster. Yeah. Because uh, the broadcaster always had four radio stations, maybe five. They used to have like a, something on, on the shortwave. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, from there, 
Um, I've, I've experienced a couple of radio stations, good friends in South Africa there. They've given me platforms to, to do my thing. Uh, Metro FM, um, Massive Metro, uh, owned by DJ Swoo, is one of the black owned radio stations. Uh, Touch HD as well. Yeah, so I've done quite a bit. And then Bangladesh, India, you know, because of my sports, my sports. Uh, and, and I've gone as far as BBC Africa as well. So that's, that's been the journey. You also have a strength in tourism. Let's just talk about that. Like, uh, how did you, from broadcasting, and you're like, okay, the passion for tourism, how did it come up, and what have you done in the tourism sector? So it's a very funny story. I was, I was sort of almost forced out of my job at, 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 the, at, at, at the Zim Papers, who owned the station. They, I was promoted and ended up leaving the radio and going into the group to manage their digital platform so we helped them to set up the websites for the newspapers and this was pretty new at the time mm -hmm. uh, get them on social media to you know manage the whole digital and then something happened somewhere along the lines and i was forced to resign oh. yeah but it was very politically charged i think okay so i was at home and the girl that um, i got the job for we then divorced <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, at the same time, things just crumbled. Everything was just Yeah, so yeah. I was sitting at home and my friend, he's actually now here in Zambia, AC Lumumba, we call him. Yeah. Um, I know him. You know him? Yeah. yeah so the, he, time, the time I, we came to Zimbabwe for the fashion week I was telling you about earlier. Yeah, yeah. He was, he's, he was, he's the one who accommodated us. Oh, fantastic. So yeah, so yeah he's the one who then said, look, come, let's, let's do something together. I, I know something that's happening in yeah. the country, in the leadership, because he was into politics deep. Yeah. So this was to be the transition of government from Robert Mugabe into Emerson Mnangagwa. Ah. So I, was very, I played a very integral part behind the scenes, managing the digital space, mm -hmm. uh, you know, pushing the message of the new guys. <laughs> so from there, uh, after that, because we, we, were, we were working directly with a guy who was at the Zimbabwe Tourism Authority as the CEO, mm -hmm. um, and he then said, no, look, um, I'm looking for a PR guy, and I think you're the guy. Do you think you're the guy? And how I was interviewed was very funny. Because I, I never went for a formal interview. Mm -hmm. So we were working with them, helping them also post you know, the government change. Mm -hmm. Now everybody wanted to be on social media. So we saw an opportunity that we can teach everybody along the lines of government how they can also be a part of uh, this digital world. Because okay. it's something I was doing at Zim Papers. So. Uh. Uh, so expertise applied there. Yeah, we had, a, we had a staff meeting. So we're talking to his staff about the importance of social media. So we had a little workshop where we we're teaching them things. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, says, stand up, young man. And I stood up and said, guys, do you think he can replace sugar? <laughs> <laughs> what? And yeah, so from there, then we started having a conversation. He ended up taking me there. Uh, and I then got into that. And as passionate as I am with things that I do, and remember, I had a media background, yeah. very strong broadcasting background mm -hmm. uh, and writing background, because I used to write in the newspapers as well. Mm -hmm. That's when I started using that skill yeah. to propagate uh, the, the, the tourism story, uh, the Zimbabwean brand. Mm -hmm. How, now you're here in Zambia. What, what's, your, what's your main goal for you, for you to be in Zambia? We know we fight over the Victoria Falls. Zambia owns it. Zimbabwe owns it. Zambia has a Do we still side. fight? I thought we had we Oh, that fight that. is still on. I it's just saw it on one of our tourism pages yeah. a few weeks ago. Uh -huh. And Zimbabwe was there like, Zambians, just leave us. This is, this is ours. <laughs> I think it's now just a, a, a sibling it's, rivalry. Yeah, but, like um, it's, just, it's a joke. We have agreed, like formally, actually, yeah. um, with the ZTA in Zambia and the ZTA at, in, Zimbabwe. in Zimbabwe, because we are one and the same thing, eh? Yeah. Um, to say, look, there's, there's, there's nothing different about Victoria Falls, whether you're in Zambia or you're in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. It's still the same thing. Of course, the best view is in Zimbabwe. But <laughs> You see, it, it will never end. The best views in Zambia. We, we all know that. So, yeah, we, we agreed formally that, look, guys, wherever we're going to, um, to, to exhibit in, in these international countries, we've been around a lot of countries telling people to come and visit Zimbabwe, telling people to come and visit Zambia, whatever. Mm -hmm. So we agreed that, no, look, we, we have to exhibit from the same spot, talk to one another together, uh, and make sure that we sell this thing from one perspective. But what's, what is very important about it and why I'm in Zambia is I'm here to also tell 
the African story because I realized that for you to be able to know Zimbabwe, you must know Africa. For you to be able to sell Zambia, Zambia is in Africa. For you to sell Nigeria, Nigeria is in Africa. And, you know, the misconception that is out there in those countries that think are better than us, it's just immense. So we need to be collaborative in the way we, we do our things. We need to be very strong about how we position Africa from a trade perspective, tourism perspective, even sport. Those are, are things that I'm passionate about and I felt like I could be some sort of, a, you know, an ambassador or an activist, if you like. Uh, around those particular issues. Those are things that really uh, you know, keep me awake at night to say how best can we sell Africa. Yeah. So instead of competing, we, we, we work together and I think we can conquer the world like that. You are a broadcaster, you know? Yeah. Uh, I'm a broadcaster. So why, why should we... Yes, we can compete in our own little way, mm -hmm. um, but the truth of the matter is that it's better to, to have Helen and, and Godfrey together. Yeah. on a project rather than ha have them fight over that project. Yeah, that's true. You see? So it's the same thing with, with Africa. It must be a seamless Africa. Mm -hmm. We have something that we're calling the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. Mm -hmm. That thing cannot start before me and you agree. You know, it's a yeah. document that our leaders have signed. They've liberal liberated us, yes. Um, but it's time for them also to, to, be, to, to, you know, to be on the sidelines, be by the terraces and clap for us and advise us how we can play the game. Yeah. Because they've been playing for long. Yeah. Do you and think that's possible though? Um, it is, yeah, it is. I see a lot of it in Zimbabwe, although people, you know, they will differ with me on this one. But I see a lot of it, if you look at our cabinet now, very young ministers, very, very young. And I think that's what we need you know, going forward. And I hope that all these African countries can pick that up and, and do it. Yeah. If they can stay at the top, you know, we just want to be there where we are actually doing the things. They can just help us to move. So yeah, I think we, we need a seamless Africa. Mm -hmm. For us to be able to compete with the United States of America, for us to be able to compete with Europe, mm -hmm. we need to be united and seamless in our action. You have a podcast called Chief Koti Show. Just tell us about that. So this show is actually meant to propagate that particular uh, you know, position that I'm giving you to say we need a seamless Africa. But in, in, the t in terms of being seamless, um, how can we be seamless if we don't know who our leaders are? Where are we holding them to account? Yeah. Are, we, are we asking the right questions? Are we seeing the right things that they are doing you know, in terms of uh, pushing the, the African agenda? Are they doing the right thing? Maybe not, actually. Yeah. So we need to be there to hold the, each other accountable and also to tell the story in a perfect way. So you are sitting here with me. People in Zambia didn't know me. They know me now through your show, your very, very popular show, by the way. Um, <laughs> and, and, and you never know from here how many people are going to call you to say, I need to connect with Chief. You know, there's something like this. Or I'm selling my, what do you call it, Vian Cola? What? Vinkuala. <laughs> Vinkuala, yes. I need to know where I can get, you know, the different varieties. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they come to Bait Bridge in Zimbabwe, we can show them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that we have connected. Yeah. And then from there, we now need to understand how do I actually import those things from Zimbabwe into Zambia? Mm -hmm. How do I import uh, stuff from Zambia into Zimbabwe? Mm -hmm. And are there any trade relations that are there in between the two countries? Of course they are there, but... How, how well are we positioning ourselves and how easy are we making this? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't make it easy because we don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's like true. I'm talking about this, uh, this uh, Africa continental tree, uh, free trade area. Uh -huh. It's something that is supposed to make our life so easy in business. And why should you struggle to get footage in Zimbabwe? Yeah. Why should you struggle to get footage in, in Nigeria? Yeah. You shouldn't because yeah. it's there in that document to say there's free movement. There must be free access. And now the issue of visas is something that gives me a serious headache. I, I was listening to an interview by Alinko Dangkote. Mm -hmm. He says he needs to have 35 visas for him to move around Africa. Doesn't within 55 countries. Yeah. But his equivalent, who is the CEO of Total, uh, was based in France, needs one visa to move around okay. Africa. Yeah. How unfair is that? Yeah. This guy is African. He's a billionaire. He's one of the great guys that we have produced as Africa. Mm -hmm. But he's, you know, there's no free movement. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to do. So I think 
it's a message also to our leaders to say let's make sure that we implement that uh, free trade agreement because it, it allows us to have ease in doing things but we're competing a lot and this competition must stop. It must start with, with Mosi Atunia. Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> no, I don't think that was so, because you were already bragging about the better view. No, but I'm just saying, like, you can go to Zimbabwe to see it. Yeah. And you can also come to Zambia yeah. to enjoy the devil's pool. We don't have that in Zimbabwe. You see? You get what I mean? So it's so, best, on both. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. best in both ends. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So when you come to, to Africa, to Southern Africa, to say you want to come and enjoy the Victoria Falls, it's a spectacle. Yeah. Um, but how do I best experience it? So we need to have you stay in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. at a hotel in Zimbabwe, pay the money there, uh, leave your money there and come to Livingstone, mm -hmm. pay the money there, leave your money there. There's a massive hotel there in, in Livingstone that you guys just built, yeah. a 500 room hotel, big thing. Yeah. So let's, yeah. let's use it, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and I think, I think it's important for us to to, to, to watch ourselves from that perspective as Africans. We are younger mm -hmm. and we are the youngest uh, continent in the world for the next maybe 20 to 50 oh, years. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, okay. We have the youngest population yeah. in Africa and we're over a billion and 60 to 80 percent of that is young people who are below the age of 35. Yeah. So come on, we have the human capital. Yeah. We just need to now educate it as much as we can and it starts within these spaces in the media here to say look in as much as we love trending um content yeah. yeah i've seen a lot of trending and very controversial content on your show <laughs> uh, but we we also have to have uh real conversations yeah. uh where we say let's let's meet each other where it matters the most yeah. and connect if you are selling your your blocks here in zambia we call them bricks in Zimbabwe. You yeah. have been here. They're, they're, they're yeah. yeah, I saw, I saw, I saw like a nice factory that yeah. does that, and I was thinking to myself, like, you know, we do this in Zimbabwe, but we do it slightly different from what they do. Uh, so, this guy and the guy that does that, if they meet really, mm -hmm. and they can export these things to DRC, they yeah. can export them to you know to different parts of Africa, and we don't pay any money to export those things. We become properly supported and well backed up business people because we don't have taxes that are hanging over our head yeah. because I want to do business in Zambia and I want to do business in, in, in Namibia and things like this. So I think this is the conversation that I want to have with Africa. This is the space that I think needs a lot of uh, push and yeah, I, I hope it will have the uptake. You know, out of the billion people that we have in Africa, if we have at least 10 million of them understanding what this is, then we have a different Africa. So Chief Koti, I'm really expecting a lot uh, coming from your visit uh, to Zambia. I'm hoping I'll see collaborations with Zambians from here, as well, uh, from with Zambians and you, because uh, you have achieved a lot. You were listed, let me just read this out so I don't miss it out. Okay, so you were named, uh, you were listed up as part of the 40 under 40 most influential young leaders under 40, that was in 2021, and uh, you were you were named the Young PR Practitioner of the Year in 2019. You were named Communications Personality of the Year in 2020 and 2023. You have been also been recognized by the Business Connect as a top 50 African presenter in 2022, 2023, and 2024. Mm. Yo, those mm. achievements. <laughs> that, that's a lot. How, um, how does that make you feel? Like when you go through your bio and you're like... Do you know what? I actually don't read it that much. Um, yeah. Because somebody said to me, uh, one of my mentors, <coughs> he had heard it also from Apple. It's like they are, they are, it's like their mentor. That's how they move. Yeah. They say we celebrate only but for a nanosecond. Mm -hmm. So as far as I'm concerned, those things are now at the back. We now need new ones. You know, we now need to get to the Forbes of this world. We now need to get to you know young influencers in Africa. And things like that. So uh, it's a blessing, and I'm, I'm very grateful to the guys that have given us these awards. But um, they're just awards, really, uh, that say, yeah, we can see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But they don't say, stop there. I'm afraid to grow a big head. <laughs> so I don't look at those accolades as no, much I like as that. I do. Um, I try to keep it very low and just keep doing what I do on a daily basis. And I feel like I'm not doing enough anyway. So I want to do more. So yeah. as I leave Zambia, um, we must have uh, influenced, you know, youngsters. And hopefully we can come back to speak here 
uh, and then have these conversations even at a bigger scale, you yeah. know, uh, and interact more, link businesses in Zimbabwe and Zambia, link businesses, you know, across Africa, um, and, 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 you know, build new billionaires. Mm -hmm. It can't be Dangote every day every now and then. And we need to the see young people penetrate and, you know, the industry. We need young people to yeah. come now. Yeah. And then let's see them. I've, I've, I saw some young millionaire here in Zambia who's doing quite well. Yeah. Um, and yeah, those are the kind of youngsters that we need. But the problem that we have, we've got this big man mentality. I must be Chief Koti and everyone else who's around me must uh, you know, bow down to me. No, I want us to have a table where we can have 200 millionaires from Zambia going to Uganda to do business there. Uh, and to interconnect. So that, that's my passion. That's what makes me tick. And I don't know how I would do that without infringing on the political space because there's a lot of it there. But our leaders must now really wake up to that core. And we are not playing games as young people. We are here to take over those spaces. They can do their politics whichever way they want, but they must do it in a way that opens doors for us but do you think the toxic political space can eventually just kind of derail what, what you are trying to achieve? I, see, I see a lot of change in, 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 in the leaders in Africa. You know, we, we, we also downplay ourselves a lot. That's the problem. We see negatives a lot. But if you look at the way uh, Ruto is speaking at the moment in Kenya, mm -hmm. he's speaking very pro-African. And they are the first generation of leaders to be able to tell the Macroons of this world to say, look, you guys have come here and they've exploited us a lot. You are still exploiting. Yeah. This has to stop. And you know now the new crop of leaders in, 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 in Mali and all these youngsters that have actually forcefully taken their countries back. Yeah. These are the leaders that we are actually looking at. And you've got, uh, you know, elder statesmen like uh, the Mnangagwas of this world, uh, you know, the Museveni's of this world. The conversation has changed. And the conversation is now looking within to say, no, we are Africans, we have our resources. And I think they are trying to also create a platform for the youngsters to take over. But we need to also be ready as youngsters to say, okay, we are taking over. Not from a political space, I'm not a politician. I don't want to talk politics as much, but it affects what, what we do, like you're saying. And we need to now have business-minded youngsters who are saying, I am taking over from where... Uh, Dankote is, I keep quoting him because he's one of the great guys that we have, Patrice yeah. Motsepe in South Africa. Yeah. Who is replacing him as a billionaire in South Africa right now? We need to watch those youngsters and pump them a lot of gas so that they become big. Yeah. And when they are big, they must also remember to come back and pull one or two up. And only then can we change the world. Perfect. Uh, before you go, just any last words to the Zambian people? You can look at that. I've been preaching to Zambia about uh, taking over a space. Whatever you are doing, whether you are selling tomatoes or whatever, it's your space. Take it with pride and make sure that whatever you do makes Africa great at the end of the day. Because if Zambia is great, Zimbabwe is great. If Zimbabwe is great, Malawi is great. If Malawi is great, Sierra Leone is great, so let's let's do this, guys. You know, let's 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 collaborate as much as we can. I think it's super important for us to do that. And politicians, please be aware that we are here and we need the space. Create the environment for us uh, to be able to achieve these things. We don't want your offices, but make your offices work for us. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love that. Like we're not taking over the political spaces, but just. <laughs> enabling environment that will help a lot of young people. This has been Chief Koti and uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoy Zambia and uh, explore more. Yeah, I will discover Zambia as much as I can and explore as much as yeah, I can. Yeah, we'll, we'll try to <laughs> show you as much as we can as well. Thank you so much. This has been your girl, Helen. I hope you enjoyed this interview. And uh, please, your social media handles. At Chief Koti across the platform. Yeah, yeah so Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Everywhere. Everything. So just check for Chief Koti. Check out his podcast. Very interesting conversations on there. And uh, let's get to learn. Let's, let, let's get to collaborate. Like they say, when you go together, you go very far. This has been your girl, Helen. Bye-bye.